Okay. Well, I'm going to call my, my higher ups and figure out how we're going to handle this, okay? My name is Norma Thornton. I live in Bullhead City, Arizona. Here's the bad news. Uh-oh. You're under arrest. I am? Yes, for violating the city ordinance. Good news is, all I'm gonna do, get your fingerprints, all that stuff, and I will bring you right back here. The city of Bullhead has made it a crime to feed the needy. Technically, I'm supposed to be handcuffing you and everything too, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I, I don't think I don't think that. you're a hardened criminal. I don't think you're you're out to hurt me. I'm not out to hurt anybody. Just so you know, you are under arrest. This is an arrest. You must go to court. Do not come back into the park and feed people. If you do, you will definitely spend the night in the jail in Kingman. Apparently next time they'll go ahead and handcuff her and rough her up too. 78 year old Norma Thornton, uh, she was, as you can see from that video, feeding homeless, uh, uh, less advantaged folks in a park. Police came and arrested her. Uh, here's more backstory about her arrest and who she was, who she is, and um, and why this is even more disgusting. I had a restaurant for a very long time, and I worked restaurant work for quite a bit. A friend of mine had been volunteering, making food for the homeless, and asked me, "Would I please be interested in in uh, serving food one day a week?" And I found it very exciting and. So volunteered. This gave me purpose and a good way to use my skill and gave him. And as he was walking away, these two police officers drove up, uh, Bullhead City Police. Finally, the day came to come and talk to the prosecutor person. And then they would set a date for criminal, <laughs> criminal court. So criminal, criminal court, as you see her background there with having a background and helping folks out, at least feeding and being able to cook and donating her time to this. So you're gonna go to jail for that, that's for sure. This is again, this is Bullhead, Arizona. Um, and so one more piece here about why this whole thing is a crime and um, it won't make much sense, I don't think, but uh, let's watch more. Thought of, of people being hungry. I mean, I'm not making a big impact, it's not that much, but at least some people have enough food to survive. And I can't even imagine living in this country and being hungry. To be told that you cannot feed the hungry, regardless of, of what, what the circumstances are, it's sad, but it makes me really, really angry, to put it bluntly. The day after, the front page blasts across, grandmother arrested for feeding the homeless or something like that. I'm never going to stop feeding them, never. Now she's also now fighting back by filing a lawsuit though. Let's jump down to graphic three because um, she's filing the lawsuit. She's trying to push back on this whole city ordinance and rules against this. Um, but it was put in effect in 2021 and it says that people can still do charitable acts, but there's all kinds of limitations here. So in a statement, officials said that the city's food sharing events ordinance allows people to give out food or drink so long as they're sealed prepackaged foods readily available from retail outlets and intended for consumption directly from the package. People who want to serve unsealed prepared food have to apply for a food handler's permit. There's all kinds of rules around that as well, which you can also do in a, only on a limited time. There's a bunch of graphics about this, but I want to give a quick breakdown here. So only uh, sealed retail pr uh, put out food, maybe for food safety purposes. Maybe they don't want people potentially poisoning folks out in the street with just a Tupperware bowl. Who knows what's in it? Someone's going to try and eat it. But what they don't allow is for these folks who have the permits and also for the big shelters, which is only three in the whole city, I believe. They're not open very much. They're open in small windows during the day. Definitely not on weekends. And then when people like uh, who, who, uh, Thornton here would potentially do something for help, they have to then put in this permit, pay this amount of money, and then still have small windows to actually help folks. So if the pro if the problem is worrying about whether or not homeless folks or, or disadvantaged folks may get like bad food or be set up, I'm not sure if that's the purpose for why they need it packaged and, and sealed and all that. 
But there should probably be more accessibility for those types of things. And also many times those things need to be heated up or cooked. And again, folks in the middle of a park may not have a stove. Just think of it that way. Um, this is, I mean, again, this is another illustration of America as we complain about homelessness, but then we continue to exacerbate the problem, Jackson. So um, these types of punitive policies against homelessness and poverty uh, that we see all over the country, especially, I mean, well, I'm up here in New York and you know, y'all out there in, in LA, so we see it prominently. Spikes under bridges and just policies, basically I call them go away and die policies. Because that's essentially what it is, and the whole purpose is to protect property value. Even though, um, you know, th- which there's that's that's the logic there. There's also obviously uh, make society more healthy if we were to take care of these people or just you know improve people's wages, things just making society more equitable. Because we know that it costs more money to taxpayers to have over half a million people on the streets. There used to be mental health clinics all over the country. But again, the logic has shifted from uh, maintaining public health to protecting uh, expensive property value. That's why we see these go away and die policies. But I think that a lot of people uh, fail to realize how close all of us are away from being homeless. Uh, with the reality that um, you know the cost of living is continuously rising, people can't make ends meet. I was homeless last summer. I was sleeping in cars, taking showers in gyms. You know what I'm saying? Doing all types of stuff, couch hopping. And I was working the whole time. You know, I got on my feet, but you know, I, they, what if I would have had a kid, or if I wasn't healthy, if I wasn't, you know, you know. So people get caught up in things all the time. The next thing they know, they're looking for a place uh, to get some food. You know, all the fresh food we throw away in this country. So right. we just got to switch the logic from property value to public health. And if, but there has to be a care for people over property. Because as you notice, whenever people want to talk about January 6th versus the riots in 2020 and the protests that happened over police killing people, they were like, look at the auto zone that was burned down. Yep. They have absolutely a, a no care for the people that get attacked and get killed. It's always properties over people here because who does that serve? The Jiffy Lube, <laughs> the, the, the burn down the Jiffy Lube, but like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because Jiffy Lube has no insurance, number one. And number two, let's go back to killing more people. Let's forget the whole purpose of this. Anyway, um, that, that's it's the state it's the state of the country, and it's sad. Uh, if you actually stop and talk to someone uh, that's, dis, that's that's found themselves on the streets, you may see a lot of stories that you could see any of you or your family members find themselves in. Just saying.